days of Christmas. We're feeling festive. So festive. We have our Michael Bublé bubblies. Yep. Obviously Christmas color line. palette too. Yep. Green and red. Yep. And today we are doing another weird Christmas tradition that you can find in certain parts of Canada. Good stuff. I think it's not surprising that a lot of weird Christmas traditions come from Quebec. Oh, sure. Because they already want to do their own thing and they love Christmas. And and they love they love Christmas and they love traditions. Yeah. Quebec loves traditions. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I would love to do a Christmas in Quebec City oh, someday. That'd be so cool. It is the Christmas capital of Canada. Yes. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And all the buildings are all historic. And yeah. they really lean into it. They oh, do like their yeah. whole Christmas like fairs and festivals and stuff. I would love to do that someday. So for people in Quebec and, and for other Catholics, I guess, the start of the Christmas season is the Feast of St. Catherine. Yeah. There's nothing more Christmassy than the story of St. Catherine. Really? That's very sarcastic. Oh. But let's let's <laughs> let's figure out who this saint of Christmas dumb is. I was gonna be like, I'm Anglican and like we don't <laughs> I don't know her. I don't know her. Are you new here? <laughs> yeah. I don't know her. I don't know that girl. <laughs> you tell me about her. So she's a Christian saint and a virgin who was martyred. In the sure. early fourth century, at the virgins. hands, <laughs> at the virgins, <laughs> lies. How dare that's you? All, that's all I know about Christmas. Mary <laughs> is lies. The virgin. <laughs> she was martyred at the hands of Emperor Maxentius. What a day, Maxentius. Okay. So, according to her biography, which saints they have a special word for their biographies, <laughs> their hagiographies. They get their own word. Repeat that. Hagiographies. Bless you. <laughs> One more time for the people in the back. <laughs> so she was a princess and a noted scholar who became a Christian at the age of 14. She's like, I've done my research. God's path is my path. And that's what I'm deciding for Christianity's myself. Christianity's cool. And in the process of her own conversion, she converted hundreds of people to Christianity. What was she? Before that? Yeah. A pagan of some kind. Oh, okay. This is like before there's other kinds of Christian. Right. It's okay. just one brand. Okay. <laughs> It's before it went generic. Like Christian is now the generic name brand and right. we have all these different labels right. for Christian. Okay. <laughs> and so she's converting too many people and emperors, Roman emperors are not hot on Christianity. Okay. They're like if people start praising them, they won't praise me. It has to be the cults of the emperor. Yeah. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and so when Catherine's 18, the emperor's like Mm, I'm gonna kill you. Okay, after I rape you, probably. Oh yeah. Oh okay. We'll get yeah, to it. I figured that was coming. <laughs> the, the emperor gave orders to subject the saint to terrible tortures and then throw her in prison. So during her confinement, angels tended to her wounds with salves, and she was fed daily by a dove from heaven. And Christ also visited her and encouraged her to fight bravely and promised her the crown of everlasting glory. Oh. So he's like, "You're doing the right thing, Catherine. You're on the right path. Get it, girl. Get it." So the emperor is furious. In the process of her imprisonment, a bunch of people come visit her in prison, and she's converting people to Christianity Still from prison. She's prolific. Badass. <laughs> we should do a whole separate podcast that's just the story of saints. She's fighting because, a good fight, this girl. Oh, my God. That would be an amazing podcast. If someone out there just goes and does a podcast entirely breaking down the hagiographies <laughs> of Catholic and Christian saints, it would be hilarious <laughs> because they do all this weird shit and then god is always showing up like your suffering is awesome you are suffering so good with for his me. popcorn he's like this this is a i could not put my drink down <laughs> uh, oh my god Catherine! Yeah. <laughs> when you were when you were converting those people as you bled <laughs> as you bled all over the floor it was amazing it was amazing that was my favorite part oh my god and the finale <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> so she's converting people from prison, including the emperor's wife, which he was <gasps> not cool about. That's bad. And so then the, the emperor is just like, I know how I'll get her. I'll marry her. What? I don't know. So the what? emperor's like, the only way to get this woman to stop converting people is if I marry her. And she's like, no, I'm married to Jesus. <gasps> Ooh, boss ass bitch. She's like the first nun. That's what nuns do. Yeah. Nuns marry Jesus. Oh, it's I know. True. Oh, I know. It's weird. I've watched The Sound of Music. <laughs> How do you solve a problem like Maria? I don't know. 
marry Jesus? <laughs> I, well, I guess. And then she married Mr. That's Von That's a Christmas Trapp. movie. That's not a Christmas movie. Yes, much People like Die Hard. People love to watch that at Christmas. Yeah. But it's not really about Christmas. It's a Boxing Day tradition in my house. Okay. So we always like just chill on Boxing Day and you like look at all your lovely stuff. Lovely stuff and, and you just watch Sound of Music. Sound of Music is very important to my mom. Like, yeah. that was, like, what they watched every Christmas Eve. Oh, that's Yeah, nice. and then Paul came into our lives and brought a Christmas story. And so I now we watch that Christmas on Christmas story. Eve. And we watch White Christmas, like, a couple days before Christmas. I'm going to see it in, like, a, a historic theater this year. I'm <gasps> very so cool. excited. It's going to be a good time. That's so I cool. love White Christmas. Yeah. It's, like, my favorite Christmas It's TV. so good. It's so funny. But anyway, so the emperor's really angry because Catherine's not not converting people and she's converting his wife and not marrying him. So the furious emperor condemned Catherine to death. They were going to break her on the wheel, which is a very common mode of killing people. A very common and grotesque. Oh, it's awful. But Catherine, being the bad bitch that she is, (laughs) touched the wheel. It shatters. What was it made out of? a wheel i don't know it (laughs) didn't say picturing wood just like either wood or like granite i'm guessing i'm guessing wood though anyway she touched it shatters and then the emperor was like fine behead her then but so at catherine's beheading which i guess god can break a wheel but can't break a axe or sword or whatever i think guillotine's not around yet but yeah basically she's up there and she ordered her own execution what? She's ordering the execution as it's happening. She's like, uh, okay, you can cut my head off now. Uh, <laughs> and then when they cut her head off, blood didn't flow out of her neck, but instead a milk-like substance. <laughs> what? Are you feeling festive? <laughs> yeah, so festive. And then more than a thousand years later. I thought you were going to say, like, she kept talking after they cut off her head. <laughs> Probably. Converting people as she goes. <laughs> She's She is now dead. But she is made a saint in the Catholic and Christian church. She, and she's up there with her homeboy, Jesus. She's wearing, with her dog. Wearing the crown, he promised. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And more than a thousand years later, Joan of Arc identified her as one of the saints who counseled her. So she's like, I was visited by St. Catherine. And of course yeah, you were Joan. Just to bring Joan back into it. Love Joan. So what does milky beheadings have to do with Christmas? You must be asking yourself. <laughs> I, I am Milk and cookies. Wondering. <laughs> Ooh. According to the traditional account, St. Catherine's beheading was in about 305 AD, and the 25th of November is decided as the date that we commemorate it. So okay. d- November 25th, it's basically the American Thanksgiving within the Catholic Church as like, now you can start doing Christmas stuff. Because uh, she's been beheaded. Because, so. you know, it's just it's a convenient day. It doesn't really have anything to do with Christmas, but it's just in the Christmas season. Right. And so St. Catherine's Day is marked as the arrival of winter. St. Catherine's Day is mainly a secular holiday, but it is specifically associated with women because Catherine is the patron saint of virgins and unmarried women. That is hilarious. <laughs> what do you think of where St. Catherine Street is? In mm. Quebec. <laughs> in Montreal. Catherine is littered with like sex shops yeah. and like all and this sex stuff. Workers. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah. It's a it's a it's very cold. LGBTQ friendly street. Honestly, props to Quebec sex workers yeah. because it's cold out there. It's cold. It's bitter. But a hoe never gets cold. <laughs> and they're out there. And, and out I there. see you. And there's it's no mid-day. shade, no shade. Yeah, like, like no, no um, verbal shade or oh yeah, or physical shade on that street. Not a lot of trees. No, 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 no. To protect you from any elements. No, no one's like looking down on you, except Saint Catherine. Maybe, maybe Saint Catherine's not super <laughs> into it. There is a Christmas tradition associated with Saint Catherine's Day in Quebec. Okay, which is a taffy pole. Excuse me. I don't know why taffy poles. Taffy pole. <laughs> okay. Taffy pole. Okay. You know, okay. So, so you know taffy. I know taffy. You have to stretch it. Yes, absolutely. And so the women all get together and they stretch the taffy. Sure. On the 25th of November. Okay. And that's marks kind of like the beginning of Christmas, but it's specifically a grown up women's get together. Okay. And for unmarried women, you should be stretching the taffy and then giving the taffy to the guy that you're like, hey, you're sweetie. I'm available and you're mm. eligible. <laughs> And would you like to pull on my taffy? That's what I should have been <laughs> doing November 25th. <laughs> yeah. 
So it started being celebrated in Quebec. St. Marguerite Bourgeois, who's the founder of the Notre Dame Sisterhood, the Sisters of Notre Dame in Montreal, back when Montreal is just like a colonial settlement. So this is like 1600s. Um, way back. She's credited with starting the tradition as a way of keeping the attention of her young pupils by placing the taffy on the path in front of her school, leading them to the doorway. Literally the family guy bit of like, ooh, piece of candy. Yeah. Ooh, piece of candy. Yeah. So she's just trying to get girls into school. They then took that tradition and they're like, you can make taffy and give it to your beau. Your honey. And maybe he'll like, you know, get, be, get a hint. You give him a sweet, he'll be sweet on you. Exactly. Yeah. And so now the Taffy Bowl is a Christmassy speed dating mingle with single men event <laughs> in Quebec. That. <laughs> Thanks, St. Catherine. Thanks for getting beheaded. <laughs> that would be a cute story, though. Yeah. If that's how you met your, your beau. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Romance gets caught up with Christmas a lot, which I, you know, I think Christmas is like a more romantic holiday than Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. In my opinion. Like oh, Valentine's sure. Day is just one day, but Christmas is like a romantic season. That's when I, when I was single, that's when I would feel, like, worse about being single. Not oh. so much on Valentine's Day, but, like, Christmas. I'm like, yeah. Ah. People are, like, with their loved ones. Yeah. And not that I'm not. Yeah. That's you're really special making me, someone. You're really making me look forward to the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to get a taffy pull on the go. Definitely. I love St. Catherine. We didn't get to celebrate her, so maybe we should do a reprisal. Yeah. Like, let's just have another St. Catherine's we'll Day. We'll just do a taffy pull. Um, yeah, I would say that. Christmas is definitely a holiday where you like see couples and it's like you know it's when you, a lot of times like that's when you introduce like your boyfriend or girlfriend to your family yes. it's like holiday stuff like that it's happening like, in my family this year yeah a brother is introducing a significant other to the family <gasps> oh she doesn't have anywhere to go for Christmas so Ben right. was like you should just come home with me and so she is that's nice and we're very excited to have her <laughs> if she's listening <laughs> We are. I love Thrilled. her. She's great. <laughs> You've only said nice things about her. Yeah, no, she's awesome. <laughs> Do you have a favorite, like, Christmas romance movie, like rom-com? Oh, there's, oh. That is a very specific, like, niche of movies. Yeah, you know what it is because you hate it. It's love, actually. Really? Oh, I, I thought you were say... going to say The Four Christmases. Or no, not Four Christmases. The one where it's Jack Black and Kate Winslet. Oh, The Holiday. The Holiday. That would be I love my second. The Holiday. That would be my second. The Holiday is a great movie and yes. I love it. I like that uh, one. And I love Jude Law and I love, yeah. Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz seems like canceled lately, but she's great in that movie. She's good in that movie. She's so good. And Kate Winslet is just like great in anything. And Yeah, Jack Black's funny. The sweet old man uh, <laughs> who's like the direct director or actor who befriends Kate Winslet. Oh, anyway. yes. Yeah, great, great movie. So yeah, so yeah, that it's kind of funny because now in the age of Airbnb, like that's not even a weird concept. But no. the the thing that they're doing is they're trading houses for yeah. the holidays, which yeah. they're like, what a weird, wacky thing. It was like, like a we live in other people's homes all the time. It's now. like a weird, wacky website that they go on. And they're yeah. like, this is so freaking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love that one. I love actually. <sighs> It's just, it's, I don't hate it. And I get why people like it. I just can't endure it. So off the top of your head, would you think that love actually is appropriate for a 12 year old? No. <laughs> okay. God, no. <laughs> There's like very open sex scenes in that movie. So I forgot about the whole porn part. Like the whole like two people being right. stand-ins for a, for a, There's a, a little porn, porn movie. There's a porn scene. And I forgot about that. And I'm like, Mom, you and Peyton and I should watch Love Actually. So we sit down to watch Love Actually and everything's fine. Like oh, we're no. meeting Colin Firth and we're meeting the Prime Minister. And I it's like, like that the plot wedding. Line. Those two plot lines I can do. Because they don't involve children. Exactly. Like the minute you involve children in your love affairs, I'm like, yeah. I can't everything, do So it. everything's like really nice at this point. And then I'm just like sitting there and I've seen this movie a bunch of times, which is part of the problem that I didn't realize that this was coming. And I was like sitting there doing something and mom goes Linnea 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 and she's like holding Peyton's face and it's oh, the God. scene where they're like on the bed like like basically banging each other with clothes on and my mom's like Linnea and Peyton's like what's happening and I'm like was uh, she feigning oh, naivete she's like oh no what's yeah, happening she's like, yeah. oh my god Thanks for tuning in for the 12 Days of Minute Women Christmas. We love sharing the holiday season with you, and we hope that we can be a part of your holiday traditions. 
Yeah, if you want to send us a little Christmas gift, you should rate and review the podcast. Give it five stars. Let us know what you think. And you can tune in tomorrow for another episode of The 12 Days. Thanks. Bye.